What's up everybody? This is the 5th of January today. It is well in the middle of winter, but I figured I could still make a video on one easy to identify plant in the winter, and that is this guy right here with the red branches. Red osier dogwood, also known as Cornus sericea, or sometimes in the literature as Cornus stolonifera, but really Cornus sericea is the more proper modern name. And it's so easy to identify in the winter because it's got these brilliant red branches that stand out so beautifully against the snow. So all those branches you see out there, the young shoots, are all part or belonging to a Cornus sericea tree. And I think it just looks really great the way it stands out against the snow. Now there are other species you'll find in the winter with red, brilliant stems like this. So there's a few more features you can use to get a solid identification for this plant. The first is that they always grow in riparian areas like this right here, along this creek or in wetlands. Um, if you find it growing, a plant like this growing elsewhere, it is probably not a red osier dogwood. Secondly, they only get to about um, four meters tall, maybe six at the most, so for, uh, for the uh, not metrically inclined people, that'd be like 13 to 20 feet. Any taller than that, it's probably not a red osier dogwood. Uh, another feature, very important one, is the opposite branch arrangement. As you can see here, if you look at all the branches, they have another one that they're paired up with. Occasionally there won't be because maybe the branch fell off or um, it grow out in one side more than the other, but really that's pretty rare and you can see they're all paired together. And when the tree leaves out, they will be, um, the leaves will be the same arrangement, opposite. And so these plants with opposite leaves also have opposite branches. That's just kind of a rule. And finally, I can't find any examples of this, but another very important feature for identifying this plant is the presence of white berries on it. Uh, I guess they all have been eaten at this point, and the only one I could find was sort of yellowish looking because they dried up. But yeah, the white berries, along with the other three features I mentioned, red stems, the height, growing larva riparian areas, I guess there's five actually, because there's also the opposite branches, are a solid basis to identify the species by in the winter time. One important note about the stem color of this plant is that it only applies, this red only applies to the young branches. This old one, as you can see here, is now brown. And as we move up, you'll see, as we get to the younger parts of the stem, they get increasingly more and more red until we get that classic red osier dogwood color right there. Beautiful. As is always important for plant identification, it is good to know the range of this plant, and it has a quite widespread distribution in North America. It is found all throughout the mountains of the Intermountain West along riparian areas. Again, only riparian areas and like wetlands and won't be found in dry land really ever. That's pretty uncommon. Uh, in fact, it's a good indicator for water if you see the plant. It is also found in the eastern states, sort of north of 40 degrees latitude. It is also found all throughout Canada and all throughout Alaska, pretty much everywhere, except I guess the high Arctic tundras, of course. And uh, yeah, it's got a, it's a cool plant. It's Merida family Cornaceae. So, uh, it's uh, the dogwood family, of course, and it's the only native dogwood you'll find in Utah at all, but there are some non-native uh, ornamental ones introduced from elsewhere. But really, um, if you're elsewhere, there might be a few other members of the dogwood family you'll see growing alongside of it, but they certainly won't have this, these uh, brilliant red stems. Some other plants might have some red stems like this, but I'm not that familiar with which ones they're easy to mix up with, so I can't give you any, um, you know, examples of false friends, I guess. But uh, just looking at those five features I mentioned, the geographic range, the, uh, or the habitat it grows in, the red stems, opposite branches, white berries, and the, I guess, you know, 20 meter, or sorry, uh, 20 feet, six meter maximum height, you'll have a good basis for identifying this plant in the winter. Thanks for watching, everyone. See ya.